You know what this is. You know why we're here. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, and yeah, this is part seven of my cloud gaming series. If you haven't seen the first six episodes of this, uh, go ahead and click right up here to get yourself up to date. After my six failures in trying to get this thing to work the way I wanted it to, I figured it was time for a change of pace. That's right, it's out with the NVIDIA cards and in with three of these AMD Fire Pro S7150 X2 cards. Brand new at retail, these cards sold for a modest $4,000 a piece. So yet again, here I am sticking about $12,000 worth of graphics cards into a system that three years ago would have cost about $8,000 to put together. So uh, yeah, I guess this is $20,000 supercomputer that won't work, part two. But I am getting a little bit ahead of myself. First off, I need to address an issue that I didn't think I would have a problem with, and that is I ran out of memory. On top of the four virtual machines I was trying to run with the Tesla M6s, I also had to run a vCenter appliance inside of ESXi, as well as an NVIDIA licensing server. So it ate into my memory quite a bit. So it's out with the old 64 gigabytes of 2133 ECC memory and in with this. This is a 32 gigabyte kit, two 16 gig sticks of DDR4 3600 megahertz memory. And I bought four of them for a total of 128 gigs. Now we will be giving up ECC memory by going with this kit, but we will also be gaining quite a bit of speed. Now we won't be able to run at 3600 megahertz, but we should be able to run at 2666, which is the rated speed for Epic Gen 1 processors. So let's go ahead and get this installed, make sure it runs at the rated speed, and then we'll, uh, we'll work on these. So since we're on a Ryzen-based system, you know I had to go with the uh, orange heat spreaders there. There we go. That's what they look like. All right, let's fire this thing up and uh, see if it actually posts, because I haven't tried these on this board yet and I really doubt they're on the manufacturer approved list. Not worried. Are you worried? Well, I screwed up. While the 7601 Epic processor, which I have in there, 32 core, 64 threads, will technically work without ECC registered memory. Um, the Supermicro H111 board that I have will not. So I made sure I checked the CPU for compatibility, but they didn't bother checking the motherboard. Well, that's $440 that's going back to Amazon. Well, guess I'm putting this back in. Uh, hopefully the next part of this project works. Hopefully. All right, now that I have some uh, working memory back in my system, let's talk about these. This is the AMD Fire Pro S7150 X2. And how does it differ from the NVIDIA cards that I've been trying to use? First and foremost, there's actually quite a few similarities between these cards and the NVIDIA Tesla cards that I was using. Uh, they are a passively cooled card. That means there's no active fans on board, which means you need to provide your own cooling through server airflow typically. Uh, these are dual GPU cards with 16 gigabytes of GDDR5, so that's eight gigabytes per GPU. These cards also support VDI through virtualization or virtual desktop infrastructure. That means that I can take a single GPU, divvy up its power between multiple VMs and have multiple virtualized desktop environments with full 3D graphics support. Now the way these cards are doing that compared to the NVIDIA's is where the difference comes in. These are using a technology called SRIOV, which is an open source technology, and it allows you to share a single PCI Express device among multiple virtual clients, as well as sharing it with the host itself. The NVIDIA cards were using a technology called GRID, which is NVIDIA's own in-house VDI system, and it is heavily licensed and quite expensive to get into. Because the AMD cards are using SRIOV, there's actually a lot more support for them in virtualized environments. So you can use ESXi, Zen, or even KVM and Proxmox to make these cards work. Now these cards were released in February of 2016, so they're just a little bit over four and a half years old. And the GPU you may recognize as the R9-285, which means we should actually get some pretty decent performance out of this as far as 1080p virtualized gaming goes. That means that performance should land somewhere right around the RX 460 to RX 470 level, if we're lucky. I don't know if we're gonna get lucky. 
But before I get these installed into the system, I am going to install ESXi 6.7 because I hear that's the easiest and most plug and play way to get them up and running inside a virtual system. So stand by and I'll be back in a minute. All right, so ESXi is now installed, and now it's time to get the S7150X2s installed into the system and up and running. Now there is a script available directly from AMD which does install the relevant VIB files into ESXi. So we're gonna give that a whirl. But first there's a more pressing matter to get to, and that is the cooling of these cards. As I mentioned, these are just passively cooled cards and do not have a fan on board. So how am I planning on cooling this? I certainly can't rely on the 140 millimeter fans at the front of the case to push enough air through these to actually keep them cool. I knew these would need just a little bit more airflow, so let me introduce you to a little bit more airflow. Um, these are three blower fans, and I believe they operate at about 15,000 RPM. Uh, for those of you who complain how blower cards are really loud, you have no idea. Um, we're just gonna hook these leads up to the motherboard, run them at full blast, and then kind of point them at the back of these cards, and hopefully that's enough to keep them cool. So let's get these things plugged in and uh, see if I can at least make one thing work today. All right, are you guys ready to hear this thing? Uh, word of warning, Loi Matron ain't got nothing on this. And Rambo, I apologize in advance, but you're not gonna like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you one bit. <laughs> so it might be a little loud in here for a minute. You know what, that's just as annoying to me as it is to you. So uh, let's do this. That's a little better. All right, first off, we're gonna log into our ESXi server. So this is a brand new installation of ESXi. Nothing has been done to it so far. So first up, we need to actually install the VIBs for the S7150X2s. And the way we do that is copy a couple files and an installation script that you can download from AMD's website. So first and foremost, we are going to enable SSH on this system. And then we are going to enter into maintenance mode so we can actually install our VIBs. Next up, I'm going to log in to the server with WinSCP so I can actually copy the files over. And we need to put the files in a persistent memory location so we can't just dump them into the temp file and run them once. This will be a script that we need to access multiple times. So I'm going to open up VMFS, I'm going to open up Volumes, and I'm going to open up Data Store, which is my default storage on my installation drive. Then I'm going to copy these files right here on over to ESXi. Now this is two separate downloads. There's the MXGPU installation script, and then there's the actual VIB itself. That is two separate downloads, and the VIB will vary depending on what specific hardware you have or what version of ESXi you're running. So you'll wanna make sure you download the matching version and the installation script. Links to that page will be down in the video description in case you're wanting to get this up and running for yourself. With the files copied over, we're going to log in via SSH so we can actually get everything installed. We're gonna go into that same VMFS slash volumes slash data store and there are our files first order of business here is to make the mxgpu installation script actually executable so chmod plus x mxgpu there we go so to see your installation options we're just going to type in sh and then mxgpu install dot sh and we're going to use the i variable to actually install this script so sh mxgpu dash i there we go, that has been successfully installed and we're gonna go ahead and reboot our system now. Now that it's been rebooted and it's been moved to another room so I can actually hear what I'm thinking, uh, we're gonna get the MXGPUs configured. And first up, we're gonna re-enable SSH. Then we're gonna reconnect to it. Once we're back in, we're gonna go back to that same directory. So CD and then VMFS slash volumes slash data store. We're gonna run the MXGPU script one more time just to make sure that all of the GPUs are installed and seen by the system. So we're gonna type in sh, then mxgpu-install.sh, and then dash a. And then inside of here, we're gonna type in list, 
And there you can see all six of my graphics cards, all six S7150s, because there's two S7150s per card. And if that looks good, I think we are ready to start building our VMs. So we're gonna go over to virtual machines and then create or register a new virtual machine. We're gonna create a new one, MXGPU-01. We're gonna install a Windows guest machine and Windows 10 64-bit. We're gonna give it eight gigabytes of memory, so 8192. And this part is pretty important. Make sure you click the reserve all guest memory. That is, you lock down the memory that this virtual machine wants to access. Without the memory locked down, you actually won't be able to pass through a PCI Express device or use an MX GPU. We're gonna up this to 40 gigs just for testing purposes. And everything else we're gonna leave at the default. I'm gonna get Windows installed first, and then we're gonna put on the MX GPU via PCI Express pass-through. So hit next and finish. Windows installation is now complete, and I've gone ahead and installed some of the essential things that I need on there, like Chrome, uh, the virtual audio cable driver so I can actually get sound out of my virtual machine. Uh, I've got the Radeon Pro drivers copied over for the MX GPU, and I think at this point we're ready to shut down the VM and actually add in the Radeon card. So let's give this a shot. All right, machine is shut down. We're gonna go up to the edit menu, and then we're going to add another device and then add a PCI device. And oh yes, there it is. Those are all the different graphics cards that I get to choose from. Uh, I guess we'll just add the first one. Hit save. And we should be able to fire this thing right back up. I'm gonna go ahead and install the Radeon Pro drivers. What am I drinking now? It's cranberry juice and nothing else. I know there's nothing more exciting than watching someone install a graphics driver, but here we are. Yep, so you see we have monitor number one, which is the virtual graphics driver, and then monitor number two, which is our MX GPU from the Radeon Pro. Excellent. So now to turn off the built-in graphics driver. And one last time, we're gonna go up to the edit menu. We're going to go into the VM options and then go to advanced and then edit configuration. And then we're gonna search for VGA. And SVGA present, we're gonna change that to false. And that should be it. Now when we hit play, uh, we will not be able to use the web GUI anymore for the display. I'll have to get in through some kind of remote client, which is why I installed VNC. There we go. Radeon Pro settings, display adapters, AMD MX GPU. Perfect. All right, let's install Parsec and uh, please work. I just want this thing to work. All right, so there is our system with our MX GPU. Let's go ahead and hit connect. Oh, we got sound. No video yet. The host encoder failed to initialize. Try that again. Huh. I'll be back. Well, Ed friend, it's you and me again. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Highland Park Magnus, uh, one of my favorite affordable single malt scotches. You can pick this up for about 35 bucks, uh, and it's just wonderful. This project, or at least this iteration of this project, didn't exactly go as planned. Uh, as you see, my 128 gigabytes of DDR4 is lying on the table instead of in the server, and the server is not currently on. It's because really nothing worked. The unfortunate thing about this is I have no one to blame for myself, especially when it comes to the S7150X2 cards. You see, they are SRIOV, and MXGPU is a supported technology by AMD. Unfortunately, these cards do not have hardware video encoding on them. So that kind of puts us right back to square one where I was with the Grid K2 cards, which also didn't have hardware video encoding enabled. And so you're relying on software encoding to stream your game over the network. And that really never works well. To make matters worse, the performance of these cards was, well, let's just say atrocious. I did a little bit of testing over VNC just to see what the potential 3D output would be. 
I also installed a program called Rainway, which works very similar to Parsec, except it doesn't rely on the video card itself to do the video encoding. It can actually copy the frame buffer via software which introduces quite a bit of latency and MPEG compression, but it does allow you to actually get into a 3D game and try to play it. So exactly how bad was the performance? Well, picture single digit FPS in Crisis and about 20 frames per second inside of the Heaven benchmark at 720p with no tessellation. So yeah, I'm a little bit upset right now because this was almost two grand in additional hardware that made absolutely no difference to this project. Will there be a part eight to this video series? Well, maybe. But it's not going to be anytime soon, because honestly, I'm tired of looking at this thing right now. So I guess if watching an idiot fail at niche projects is kind of your thing, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon or Float Plane. Links are down in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching this one. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Are you clean yet? No one even now. Little jerk. Wichita Brewing Company, Valley View, Vanilla Porter. Ram gonna leave? Yeah, it looks like he's gonna leave. Don't take anything with you, please. It's a 5.9%. Creamy, roasty, and black. Porter with vanilla beans added. Well, I will say, I don't know that I've liked a single beer that I've had from Wichita Brewing Company yet, so uh, we'll see about this one. Kind of a strange, sour nose to it. Okay, that's not bad. Not getting any vanilla, though. It's a little roasty. It's a little bit creamy. I'll give them that. They're, they're two out of three. I don't have any vanilla. It is creamy and overall pretty good though. Got so ticked off I forgot to review the beer while I was swapping memory in and out. Um, it's enjoyable. It's definitely enjoyable. Um, it's not the best porter I've ever had, but 5.9%, easy drinking, fairly smooth, good creamy flavor, a little bit of coffee roastiness to it. Um, but like I said, it's missing the vanilla. There's no vanilla in there, and I will always rate a beer based on what they were trying to make it taste like, not how it actually tastes. Because I walk up to a tap house and I say, give me a shot of that. I, you know, want to taste some vanilla, and there's no vanilla in it. That's a problem. So it's not a bad beer, but there's no vanilla.